Welcome back to our discussion about ANOVA. Uh, my name is Alex Wiseman and we have been looking at some of the different ways that we can conceptually think about ANOVA. Remember that ANOVA is a way to uh, look at one grouping dimension and more than two levels of that grouping dimension and we're looking at differences across groups and average scores. We also talked about the fact that ANOVA is conceptually similar to a t-test in that it is looking at group mean differences. It's just that instead of two groups, which is what you look at with a t-test, we're looking at three or more groups with an ANOVA. And we talked about the way that ANOVA is really an analysis of variance, an analysis of variation or variance between groups, an analysis of variation within groups, and then we compare those two. So this is uh, when you calculate an ANOVA, this is the kind of information that you get. Um, and, and I just have the annotations here, or the uh, symbols here, that, that stand for the numbers that would be in an actual output of SPSS for this. But we have the sum of squared differences between groups. We have the sum of squared differences within groups. And then we have the total sum of squares which is uh, calculated uh, in a pretty straightforward way. We have the idea that there are degrees of freedom, that we can allow variation to uh, vary within each of these uh, sections between groups and within groups. K simply stands for the number of groups, minus 1. N is the number of participants or individuals or items that we're, we're looking at. And K is the number of groups, so that's the sample N minus the number of groups. And then the total uh, degrees of freedom would simply be the degrees of freedom for between group plus the degrees of freedom within group. We can then calculate a mean square, sum of squares, uh, between and within, and the F ratio is literally a ratio between the mean sum of squares between and the mean sum of squares within. All right. So it's a, it's a pretty straightforward uh, idea that we are looking at between group variation and within group variation and we're just trying to figure out how that compares. So the F ratio is a ratio of variability between groups to variability within groups. That would, that's what I just showed you on the last slide. Another way to think about it is that the ANOVA F statistic compares variation due to specific sources or levels of the grouping factor with variation among individuals who should be similar. Those are the individuals in the same sample. So that, that variation we just looked at is a variation among sample means and variation among individuals in the same sample. And if we think about it in terms of the two examples that we gave before, we'd see that in this one, in A, the difference in means is small these are the means right here. The difference in means is small relative to the overall variability within each of the groups. But if we look at example B, the differences in means is large actually, the difference in means is large relative to the overall variability. So in this case the F will tend to be small. In other words there's a less likelihood of there being a significant difference in the group means for example A. But in example B the F will tend to be large meaning that there is a greater chance that there is a significant difference between each of these groups when the uh, ratio of variation among sample means to uh, or, or group means to individual means within the groups um, is, is uh, like this. <laughs> So larger F values typically yield more significant, statistically significant results. And how large it is depends on the degree, degrees of freedom. This is simply, uh, instead of using K, they're using uh, I. I took this from uh, someone else. <laughs> Based on the formula for the F ratio, the sum of the differences between each individual score in a group and the mean of each group squared is a, the within group sum of squares. Okay. The between group sum of squares is a measure of variation that is the weighted sum of the squared deviations of a group means from the total mean. Same stuff we've been talking about. So we've got within group sum of squares and we've got between group sum of squares. Based on the formula for the F ratio, the sum of the between group and within group sum of squares is the total sum of squares. We're just adding them up. So if I were to ask you what does the between group sum of squares assess? 
And what does the within group sum of squares assess? Your answer would be, hey, the between group sum of squares looks at how different each group's mean is from the overall mean. Or the within group sum of squares looks at how different each score in the group is from the mean of that group. We know that k minus 1, or in our other example, I think it was i minus 1, represents the computation for degrees of freedom for the between group estimate, because this is the number of groups. n minus k represents the computation for the degrees of freedom for the within group estimate, because this is the sample n and this is the number of groups. Given the information below, if we were to, to look at this annotation, how many groups were in the study? Well, often you'll see the F statistic represented like this, where it gives the degrees of freedom uh, annotated as uh, subnotations. I thought it was going to tell us. Um, so here we have, remember, it's K minus 1 and N minus K. So if 3 is K minus 1, then k equals 4. Okay. If n minus k equals 36, and we just move that over, we know k is 4. Hey, guess what? n equals 40. So in this situation, we had 4 groups and 40 participants. <coughs> All right, if we have the F value that we have right here and a critical value of 2.88, what would you conclude? Well, we would conclude that P is less than 0.05. The probability of committing a type 1 error is less than 5%. This F is much larger than the critical F. And so we do have a significant difference among the groups somewhere in our set of groups. If we were to look at this, this is, remember, I'm going to go back just to remind you what we were looking at before. Sorry. Back, 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 back. What's so far? <laughs> there we go. Whew. This is the summary table. And remember we talked about sum of squares between, sum of squares within, sum of squares total. Uh, K minus 1, N minus K, and then the total. Mean squares between and mean squares within, and then the ratio. All right, let me see if I can skip to that other slide. Go to slide. So what does this tell us? This is the sum of squares between. This is the sum of squares within. And this is the total sum of squares. We have just added them. Right. This is k minus 1. This is n minus k. And this is the total. So we know that we have three groups. We know that we have, uh, um, sorry, 7 plus 3 is 10 participants. And so we are simply saying, look, the mean sum of squares, can you tell what we've done here? And the mean sum of squares within. So we've simply divided 2 into 3.1, 7 into 6.5. Then the F ratio is this divided by this. Lo and behold, for those degrees of freedom, this is not a significant F. So we cannot say that there is a significant difference uh, in daily hours of television watching by education, given that whatever data we had. Now, if we looked at this kind of information, we could start to make some guesses about what might be happening based on what we know. Do you think there are any significant differences between group means if we look at high school information about post-high school opportunities by Saudi students' post-high school expectations? This is given in frequencies. So we have uh, uh, our Saudi students' post-high school expectations. Do they expect to go to university? Do they expect to work in the government, in the public sector? Or do they expect to go into the private sector labor market? And then we have high school students saying whether they strongly agree, agree, not sure, disagree, or strongly disagree. It's a Likert scale. And then we have frequencies, and we can convert that to percentages for each of those. 
Now, I didn't give you the, the N on this, but we can calculate this because they did have the data uh, when I calculated this before. And we can see that the sum of squares for between groups is incredibly small. Incredibly small. And the variation within groups is incredibly wide. Now, what would this look like? Remember when we did the box plots earlier? It would look something like this. Do you see how there's no variation between the means, really? So that between group variation is very small. And there's a huge amount of variation within each group. So the within is very large. And what do we know about when we have a very small between group difference and a very large within group difference? Well, we know that the F will tend to be incredibly small, which it is, right? Even though we have a very large N. And so as a result, there's no statistically significant difference that we can calculate uh, among these various groups. Right? That's the way it goes. But we can visualize that using the information that we have in our output. So, some reminders. Simple ANOVA is also called a one-way analysis of variance. It's one way because there's one grouping factor. How is ANOVA similar to and different from a t-test? Well, it's similar to a t-test in that the differences between means are examined. But the biggest conceptual difference is that there are more than two means, or more than two groups, usually three or more. Simple ANOVA involves testing the difference between the means of more than two groups on one factor. That's all we need to remember right there. One-way analysis of variance looks for differences between the means of more than two groups. How many times can I say that? Now, if I were to say what is not a requirement for simple ANOVA, we could say that testing the influence of more than one factor at a time, as well as a combination of factors, is not required because we are talking about one way. Right? So we're only looking, we're not looking at more than one factor. We're only looking at one factor at a time. And we're not looking at a combination of factors. It's one factor at a time. The ANOVA formula, which we just looked at in that table, compares the amount of variability between groups to the amount of variability within groups. And the average difference between groups, as the average difference between groups gets larger, the F value increases. In other words, there's a better and better chance that that computed F value is going to be larger than the critical F. Remember that ANOVA is best described as an omnibus test, meaning that we can only find whether or not there is a difference somewhere between the many groups that we have. But we don't know specifically which groups are significantly different from one another simply by calculating the F for an ANOVA. So an omnibus test refers to a test that examines the overall differences between means. That's why ANOVA is an omnibus test. If the means of each group being compared on a factor are equal, then F will equal zero. There is no significant difference. Uh, let's see, how can I make it so you can see this? If we had this information, we know that some people are more susceptible to hypnosis than others and that people who are highly suggestible have a vivid imagination and fantasy life, this can lead us to hypothesize that the ability to recall dreams will also be affected by hypnotic susceptibility. We can calculate this, and I will use this sort of silly example to show you how we can use SPSS to calculate an ANOVA in the next screencast.